So let's talk about how a complex number a plus bi can be represented in a polar form. So we've got essentially the Cartesian plane, except instead of talking about an X and a Y axis, we talk about a real and an imaginary axis. And we've got this number A plus BI which, although it's a number, you can think of it as being basically a point. And if we can find that angle theta and this distance r, we can represent that point using polar coordinates. Well, let's begin. Um, we'll start with R. R gets a fancy word when we're working with um, complex numbers. R gets called the modulus. And R is the square root of a squared plus b squared. And um, if you look at the right triangle we have drawn on the whiteboard, you'll see that this is the Pythagorean theorem. So r equals the square root of a squared plus b squared, via the Pythagorean theorem. Then let's see. The cosine of theta is A divided by R. And the sine of theta is B divided by R. So A equals R times the cosine of theta and B is r times the sine of theta. And we are now going to plug and play. This is going to go in for a. This is going to go in for B. Let's put the imaginary unit in front of the sign. We pull an R out and we get a cosine of theta plus I times the sine of theta. So this is how you write a complex number using polar coordinates. Again, just sort of summarizing very briefly. Here's 
try that again. Here's A plus B I. Here's R. There's theta. So we can write A plus B I in terms of R and theta. Um, the textbook introduces some new notation. Um, so I'm just going to mention this so you're not just horribly confused when you see it. It introduces this cis notation. And this is shorthand for the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. Um, you see c cosine, I, I, S, sign is the reason that CIS is used. I'm probably just going to keep writing out cosine theta plus i times the sine of theta. It's pretty late in the semester to be learning um, this kind of new notation, but I wanted to mention it since the textbook does use it. 